Hi, I'm Carrie Young and I'm a graduate student in the Brunfit Group. In this video, we're going to provide a brief introduction to electron paramagnetic resonance or EPR spectroscopy. The purpose of this video is to introduce CBIC users to this relatively underutilized technique. If you think that EPR could be useful for your system, contact CBIC staff. In general, EPR spectroscopy is used to characterize systems that contain unpaired electrons. These are generally metal centers, like in coordination compounds or organometallic compounds or metalloproteins. Uh, but we can also study materials or organic radicals. Uh, unpaired electrons can also be induced either by uh, radiation, like light, or by introducing spin labeling molecules. The information that we can learn from EPR spectroscopy includes the identity and oxidation state of a metal center or the local environment around an unpaired electron. In addition, we can often learn something about the neighboring nuclei to an unpaired electron through something called the hyperfine interaction. So the hyperfine interaction is when nuclei interact with the unpaired electron, and it's similar to the J-coupling seen for NMR spectroscopy. The samples for an EPR spectrum are prepared in these uh, long, skinny EPR tubes that are made of quartz to remove paramagnetic impurities. EPR samples can be either liquids or solids or gases, and can include everything from powders to single crystals, frozen solutions, or protein samples. We measure the EPR spectrum using our EPR spectrometer. EPR is a magnetic resonance technique, which means we need both a magnetic field and an electromagnetic frequency. Uh, for EPR spectroscopy, uh, we fix the electromagnetic frequency around 9 gigahertz, which is in the microwave region. And then we scan the magnetic field using our electromagnet here, and we, with measuring the sample in the, the center of the magnetic field. The, we can measure samples either at room temperature or at cryogenic temperatures. And for EPR spectroscopy, this is mostly done at liquid helium temperatures between 4 and 10 Kelvin. This has been a brief overview of EPR spectroscopy, but there's certainly a lot more to learn. If you think that EPR could be used for your system, contact CBIC staff.